Welcome to the venting course. This is one of your G2 training courses. And in this course, we are going to use unit 22, which is called venting. And this is going to be the only book that we use, only textbook. We're also going to use the code book along with unit 22 in every lecture. So this is the first lecture of the course. And we're going to talk about uh, chapter one. Uh, venting systems and chapter one is probably the smallest chapter in number of pages but because it contains a greater number of new concepts and new terminology we are going to spend a little bit of more time per page if you wish on this chapter and the objectives if you look at uh, page 8 in unit 22 on the in the seventh edition uh, at the end of this chapter, you will be able to describe vented appliance categories. That's what we're going to do the last thing. Uh, review draft definitions and uh, effects. We're going to start with that because we need to learn what draft is because before we can talk about anything else. And then describe venting system components. Hopefully at the end, you will be able to tell me that this is a, a vent connector versus a main vent, or this is a C vent versus a B vent, or what are the uh, heat loss places for a venting system and whatnot. So again, we're going to start with a uh, with the draft definitions and effects, because that's how we're going to gain our knowledge of the terminology to be able to discuss this matter or even think about it. So, in your code book, you know, section three of the code book is definitions. Uh, and by code book, I mean B149.1, natural gas and propane installation code. And uh, in the definitions under D, you can find draft. And uh, as you can see, there are three, uh, one, two, three kind of definitions for draft, different uh, uh, types or kinds of draft. One is a chimney draft, obviously the available natural draft of the chimney um, measured at or near the base of the chimney itself. All right. Um, I don't expect that you make sense of this sentence right now, but eventually uh, things will get clearer and uh, clearer. Mechanical draft uses some kind of a of a motor electrical motor basically we call it a venter motor and uh, based on where the motor is located in relation to the ignition point if it is prior or upstream from the ignition point we call it a force draft it, if it is uh, downstream from the ignition point we call it induced draft as simple as that and if we're not using a mechanical draft at all we call it natural draft in natural draft instead of the electrical power that moves the motor that moves the fan that moves the gases we use the power of the heat generated in the combustion itself to move the combustion products which obviously are going to be very very hot in this case in, in previous courses, you've uh, learned that uh, you are going to need both, uh, you know, combustion air and fuel gases. You, you, you need both to go into the combustion product and then you're going to add your ignition there uh, to complete the triangle, uh, the fire or flame triangle, sustainable combustion triangle. Um, to have that heat generated at the rate that you need it in some places you will need a hundred thousand BTUs in some places you will need a hundred million BTUs depends on your application the more BTUs per hour you need the more volume of gas and combustion air are going to flow per hour into the combustion chamber the, I think the question then becomes that okay so say for example we had done that for a while and you know we have filled our combustion chamber with at the top of it at least with uh, combustion products 
um, then what, right? Uh, what, where are those combustion products going? Obviously, in this case, they are, you know, pretty hot, so they are going to rise. We said there is no motor, so heat rises, and they are going to go up. And then what? Going up where, right? They are going into what we call the venting system. That's it. So you have your, you know, supply of air and fuel gases. You have your combustion going on, right? In the combustion chamber. And then you have your venting that is going on here. Bonus thing. This here is called the appliance breach, by the way, because that's the point where the flue gases or the combustion products are breaching the appliance to the outside. So, um, in other words, let's think about operating an appliance in three consecutive phases. Okay, so three consecutive phases. Air and fuel gas go in. If you remember, we did this part last semester and we called it pipe sizing. We learned how to size the natural gas or propane um, supply system in diameter and length and whatnot. Um, this, whatever air required, combustion air required, is going to be chapter number six in unit 22. So at the end of this course, we're going to learn how much air we're going to provide uh, per BTU uh, we burn. So combustion, uh, you've learned so much about combustion uh, in Unit 3, for example, in G3, in Unit 9, it was all about introduction to gas appliances and whatnot. And, of course, this course is going to be about venting. And I need to emphasize uh, one factor, that we're not going to learn about all kinds of venting. We are going to learn about category one appliance venting thing okay and uh, what does category one means versus category two and three and four we're going to talk about it at the end of this uh, chapter all right so uh, let's make a definition clear uh, draft is the flow of air or combustion products or both through an appliance and its venting system so why do we say venting system and you know not say just venting or um, say for example the chimney or um, or the draft or just we say system we say system it, it feels very form it feels like someone has to design it and that's exactly why we say system because someone has to design it and someone has to be able to troubleshoot it if it doesn't work properly. And here is an image uh, depicting an open fire pit. Obviously, we cannot precisely say when humans created, you know, or invented fire uh, as a technology, and uh, we still enjoy making our fire pits and sitting around it. Uh, I personally haven't seen anyone who doesn't like watching a fire nice fire pit going on um however the fire pit itself is quite different than you know the the um for, you know the furnaces and the boilers that we work with and some other uh, more complicated and sophisticated appliances and uh why because in a fire pit uh, you have your solid fuel there right and you have your combustion air coming in from all directions, you know. And then you have your draft or your combustion product, you know, leaving, going in all directions. It will certainly go in the direction where you're sitting uh, in your chair comfortably and having your, your drink. And uh, it will go in any direction, basically, that the wind blows. And if there is absolutely no wind, if there is absolutely no air movement, you can you can see that the combustion products are going to rise up because heat rises up. Now, the thing is, 
even this is rudimentary this this a very beautiful i i i'm trying to find something like this for my backyard actually um so this is a very beautiful um let's call it an appliance because it's burning you know fuel and it's providing heat in addition to it being very uh, beautiful ornament there so um it is very i'm saying very rudimentary and basic compared to obviously to the appliances that we use however it is different than a fire pit open fire pit it has this thing here this cylinder right and funny thing about that cylinder it's not a conspiracy theory but you're going to find it everywhere you know i'm i'm betting that the image on the right is uh something that is built for more practical reasons it doesn't look something very decorative to me i think it is built for maybe cooking uh, possible but the question stands why why do we use that uh, cylindrical shape why do we go to additional cost and uh, effort and time to build that cylindrical shape that's the question we're going to ask and that's the question that is going to lead us to the starting point of understanding how draft is uh, generated and maintained most importantly here here are three completely different applications of uh, heat generation uh, sorry there, there, the two of them are residential but maybe three different applications of uh, I would say venting systems so in this case you know this chimney it's not cylindrical but still falls under that uh, general description of a conduit that taking the combustion product to the atmosphere so my question would be why why do we need all that why don't we just get rid of all that and make an opening here and let the combustion products go out from there right it's practical maybe you're gonna say no that looks better it's easy on the eye in in residential applications we spend money on uh, things that are beautiful okay how about this these are chimneys and i am going to bet that they cost a lot of money why did whoever build that build, build those chimneys it cannot be you, you cannot you know say they are built for their good looks because they do not have good looks and also they are costing money for someone who's probably trying to save money it looks like very industrial application and uh, you know when you're building your industrial complex you don't want to spend more money than it is necessary so there is a there is a practical need for that 100 percent sure in the third picture here you have your two uh, vent connectors and then you have your main vent right vent connector basically is that piece that connects the appliance to the main vent this is being the main vent going to the roof well in this case the application is uh, is pretty simple i'm not gonna dump the combustion products in the house as simple as that i can explain it here um, that's why i'm trying to find a way uh, to build something like a pipe that will take my combustion products from my appliances indoors to the outdoors right so let's have a look at then uh, let's take a step back have a look at the bigger picture what are vending systems what are the functions of the, what what do we expect from the vending systems only three things it can boil down into three things number one completely vent the flue gases to the outdoors without spillage into the building well yes please uh, flue gases are the combustion products and the air uh, coming from the combustion chamber uh, dump them all out don't don't spill any of that in back into the building that's absolutely unacceptable uh, secondly effectively vent at a rate 
that ensures the proper operation of the appliance. In other words, if I need to burn 100,000 BTUs per hour worth of fuel, my venting system should be able to remove that much of combustion products per hour. Okay, so whatever that your appliance is putting out uh, in terms of its capacity, the venting system should match that capacity or be a little bit bigger, just slow, slightly bigger, not smaller. And then operate safely in terms of fire. Well, yes, please, obviously. We don't want to uh, be dealing with uh, hazards there. So those are the three things that you always think about. Remove everything outside. Have the capacity that matches the appliance. And whatever you're doing, do it safely in terms of the venting temperature-wise. And, um, and, and, of course, corrosion-wise. A lot of uh, venting systems are made of metal. And uh, unless they are made of stainless steel, some of them are, uh, but others are just galvanized, uh, you know, steel or, or whatever that can be corroded. Some of them are clay uh, or, or lined with a clay tile. Uh, some of them are brick. Of course, those are going to uh, deteriorate in time and create all kinds of hazards or uh, unsafe operating conditions. Now, fundamentally, we want to talk about the diameter of the venting uh, system. We're going to talk about the height of the venting system, and we are going to talk about the material of the mm -hmm. venting system. If you decide all three of those, you have designed a venting system. That's the bottom line of this. Now, let's just say that the diameter and the height are uh, what we call sizing sizing of the venting system material is going to be given to you um, it's not so in vent sizing no one is going to ask you what material should we use with this it is going to be given to you and to understand better uh, the only time you're going to be asked what material to use is either it is uh, is a rule like for example Recessed wall heaters shall always use type BW venting uh, systems. Why? Well, because the code book says so. Okay. Uh, or, for example, if you have a, uh, if you're going to use system 636, uh, there are four different categories of it, depending on the temperature of the flue inside of it. Uh, then you can, you know, decide what to use. But usually material is given to you in uh, as, as far as the scope of the sizing um, in Unit 22. And you're going to be told it's either a chimney, tie line chimney, or it's going to be type B double wall vent. That's it. You're, you're not supposed to be uh, guessing what material you're going to use. So, in other words... Uh, to determine all three, you need to understand temperature and pressure. Of the draft and the flue gases. That's what you need to do. Once you understand that, you know what uh, system it is. You have already designed it. And uh, what we're going to do in the next, uh, you know, uh, video is we're going to talk about the details of those temperatures and pressures and what creates the pressure. You know, we know what creates temperature, but what creates the pressure and where those where does the pressure go?